gains that we are seeing today. Indusind Bank is the other one which is higher in trade today. Nestle India, some of the stocks which are at the day's high. We have Access Bank, Indusind Bank, ICICI Bank. Okay. Across the board, there are big gains. And finally, Ikta, we were talking about waiting for it. And finally, it's here yes, in absolutely. the same show. <laughs> so, yes. So, uh, all-time high on Nifty. And Bank Nifty is one of those which, have, which has actually contributed to, to it. In fact, we have Prashant with us in the studio. Prashant, uh, you were talking about if we wait a lot for something, it really doesn't happen, but it has. It has, and we're all thankful for it, right, finally. I mean, what a difference four or five points can make. I mean, yes. it doesn't matter about your four-point shot. Yes. You're not quite there, uh, but yeah. now you're there. I mean, at least you've uh, hit a high. The high yeah. basically is 18,604.35, and, uh, you know, we've kind of pulled back a little bit. So it did hit that high. Uh, I mean, so that is in the bag in that sense, uh, so as to speak. Uh, and, and it's been a, I mean... You know, today's session actually has been uh, pretty typical of what we've seen all through this year. Uh, since, I mean, you know, the, the dire down, downtrend started, which is the fact that dips have been bought. This morning, we started with about mm -hmm. an 80-odd point downtick. And, uh, you know, that was an opportunity to buy. And the market has proceeded beautifully uh, to a, a new all-time high, the day's high. Uh, and, of course, uh, you know, we're based back at October 2021 highs. This is quite remarkable, guys, because, you know, actually in two ways. One is absolute returns have been, mm. uh, uh, you know, mm. not outstanding, but they've been good. And we'll put out some graphics which tell you that. But I think the bigger point is the uh, relative outperformance, right? And I think this is something we uh, have been highlighting. This is, uh, this is what we're talking about. I mean, old highs yeah. to new highs. This is nothing but, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, uh, where stocks are, Nifty 50 stocks are, where they were in October 2021, 10th yeah. of October, uh, 19th of October 2021, which is the previous high, and where they are now, these are the laggards. Actually, although the Nifty has hit a new high, hmm. 26 out of the Nifty 50 stocks are uh, still uh, kind of below their respective October 2021 levels, and only 24 are uh, above their October 2021 levels. Let's just go back to that first plate in terms of the winners. Uh, you know, the outstanding, the big one is Adani, Adani Enterprises, right? 1,500, 1,600 nearly, almost 4,000 now. ITC, of course, is the other one, uh, which was, I mean, you know, which was the butt of all memes, etc. a year ago. But look at that, 138 to 340. Mahindra and Mahindra was 917 at 1,251. Aisha was 2,700 at 3,400 now. Coal India. Coal India, actually, is it's interesting. And I was surprised looking at the data. as one of the few stocks which uh, has seen continuous earnings upgrades through this year as well for F523. Sun Pharma is another one, 827 to 1,000 uh, plus, ICICI Bank, State Bank of India, and Bharti Airtel. On the flip side, in terms of, you know, stuff which has not done well, the laggards, take a look at that. I mean, yeah. Wipro from 700 to 400, Divis has uh, lost a fair bit. So if you were sitting on some of these names uh, and, and you're looking at them now, I mean, you're still down, uh, you know, 15, right. 20, 25 yeah. percent tech mahindra. A lot of tech names, actually. Yes. Which have underperformed. Which have underperformed. Yeah. And the point is, for technology, it may not be the case that October 21 was the high for those respective mm. stocks. But for the sake of consistency, we're taking that one date uh, as a point of reference, point of comparison. 19th of October 21, when the, Nif when the Nifty hit uh, 18604. And then we're kind of looking at where prices were then for individual Nifty constituents and where they are now. Tata Steel, Hindalco, HDFC mm. Life, etc. So this is a remarkable journey. Absolutely. There's no question about that. And it's predominantly led by a lot of the rate sensitives, autos, banking stocks. Uh, but let's get in some opinion now. We have Ajay Srivastav of Dimensions Corporate Finance Services joining in. Uh, Ajay, hi, welcome to the show. Well, uh, you know, if you could just start by giving us your perspective in terms of what you're buying today. Ajay, is my voice reaching you? Okay, we have Mihir Bora also joining in to discuss uh, the Nifty at an all-time high. Mihir, hi. Welcome to the show. Mihir joins in from Max Life Insurance. Well, it's a momentous day for us, but we were just talking about how the entire texture of the markets have changed from the last time the Nifty was at these levels. It's a lot of, uh, you know, participation from banking stocks, from Adani Enterprises. So what would you probably put your money in for incremental gains from these levels? Hi, good afternoon. Always a pleasure to be on, on a good day here. Uh, so I think uh, the good, as you mentioned, the good thing about this whole uh, move has been the broad-based participation. 
so while the previous two years we saw the exporters doing well, IT, pharma, all that, but now in the last few months we have seen the domestic sectors doing well, which is uh, banking, uh, uh, discretionary, those kind of names. Even even infra and cap goods are doing very well. So I think uh, the world and the markets are basically saying that the domestic economy is on a stronger footing than the than the global situation. And I think that's what's now leading the next wave of the move in the market. Uh, so we are basically uh, the markets and we are betting on the domestic e uh, economy doing better than the global economy. Mm. You know, uh, guys, uh, Yusuf just sent us this yes. data on uh, mm. the outperformance, right? Mm. And I think, I don't know if you have the graphics, if you can pull this up. It's, it's well known, but it makes sense to put this up to just to re-emphasize uh, the kind of outperformance we've seen. Mm. Uh, Nifty in dollar terms is down 3% uh, year to date. Uh, you know, the S&P is down 15.5%, the DAX is down 16.5%, and the Hang Seng is down 27%. Mm. You know, it's, it's uh, uh, unimaginable, or at least now, mm. of course, we can imagine because it's already ha it's happened. <laughs> it has happened, yes. But, uh, you know, I've covered markets from 2004, and it's not, uh, it's, it's, we have never seen, I mean, a year like this, mm. as if most other people yes. who've come on the program, I'm sure Ajay will agree, Mihir will agree uh, that, you know, if you have told anyone that the market, the S&P will down, will be down 15, yes. 16 percent uh, by by this time of the year, and we will be actually, uh, you know, down minorly and at all-time highs. I mean, it would uh, it was something that most people would have just completely shrugged off, saying, "Well, won't happen." Mm. Yeah. But it has happened, and of course, I mean, one of the big reasons uh, for that is retail participation, yeah. which has absorbed all sorts of things. Even now, I mean, you know, in the month of November, November, December onwards, etc., we are seeing. Tens of thousands of crores of uh, you know supply from these new age companies coming to the market. Interesting, right? you saw the article today. Mercedes yeah. the marketing <laughs> head saying that SIPs are impacting sales of Mercedes. So you know, the, I, I, I saw that. It's, it's crazy, right? I know. Uh, the average size, the average they size of the sense. SIP is two thousand rupees. Correct. A Mercedes, the, I'm assuming, costs nothing less than twenty lakhs. Yes. Twenty five lakhs. I think right? more than that, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't understand the comparison, but yes, he did bring SIPs in the conversation. I think, I think he's just referring to the. They're strong getting more money in the bank now. Yes. You know, working in a higher interest rate environment. But I think it's absolutely uh, smart, right? Sense. I mean, the savings absolutely. culture is, uh, is, is, and I think that's the point he's making, yeah. SIPs versus Mercedes. <laughs> but I think that's, uh, that's the kind of uh, market we've been, that's the kind of participation we've seen as well. Ajay is with us. Ajay, uh, Ajay Srivastava, of course. Ajay, uh, afternoon, uh, Prashant here, new highs on the Nifty as well. It was a matter of time. The, the Sensex was already there. Bank Nifty was there and now the Nifty as well. Your thoughts, Ajay? Well, thanks. Yeah, Prashant, it's a great story. I think I was worried that I'll start aging faster than the index. But I think good the index has caught up with my age. That's wonderful. I think it's a great story because it's a story of resilience. But, you know, also it's a very interesting story for investors to know that how they did not make money and in the return on their capital, how poorly equity markets have performed. And they need to be smart about churning the portfolio. Mm -hmm. I think the story is all about are you booking profit? The story is all about telling you that, listen, this long-term paradigm story is gone. You need to keep moving with times. And if you're stuck with the portfolio, at the end of the year, if you made nothing, you know, you're better off in a PF at the end of the day, which gives you 10% pre-tax money. So I think it's great that we have outperformed the global market, but also a very good lesson for people to say, you know, we outperformed, but we never made money. Mm. And I think that could be true of That's many portfolios in this point. country. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Ajay, you speak about how global markets are underperforming. And of course, we have been putting out that data as well. Mihir, you spoke about you focusing on domestic themes versus the global themes right now. We, have, we are talking about banking index contributing big time to the moves that we are seeing. From here, what? What sectors do you think will work? Will banking continue to outperform? because uh, in terms of absolute levels while well, the banking index uh, is at uh, is at highs but if you look at the price to book of the index the valuation of the index we are still uh, not above the pre uh, pre pandemic uh, level so there is some valuation buffer there in the in the banking space i'm talking more specifically about banks i think nbfc's probably may uh, uh, underperform a bit because of the liability uh, you know uh, getting uh, cheap uh, more dear, more dear interest rates going up as far as borrowings are concerned but banking for sure uh, should continue to do well uh, and if you look at many of the you know construction linked the cap good infra segment uh, stocks valuations there are far below uh, pre covid levels so i think a lot of the themes in the domestic uh, space still have valuation buffers Okay, well, you know, Ajay, I just want to, you know, extend that point forward with regards to the banking space. 
because there are two uh, real stories which are emerging. Uh, the PSU banking space is, you know, within its own orbit at this point in time, Ajay. And uh, the valuations on a price to book, you know, on a price to book basis on a one year forward, many of them are not even at one time. But do you think that this is the time to probably invest in PSU banks? Uh, well, you know, the answer is simple that where do you see the... Okay, I think we've lost Ajay, but uh, Mihir, I'm going to throw that question to you. PSU banks, uh, would you buy them at current levels? Uh, sure, as a tactical play, yes, but not not as a long-term structural play. Uh, tactical because uh, because the the private sector banks have outperformed quite a lot. There is a valuation gap that has opened up, so there's always a scope for that buffer to kind of narrow. But I think uh, if you were to look at a buy and hold strategy, it will still be in the favor of the private sector banks. Hmm. Okay, uh, private sector bank. Uh, you know, Ajay, are you with us? Are you? Are we, we, okay, I think we lost Ajay. We'll try and reconnect uh, with him. Mir, uh, you, you know, actually, uh, Ajay, the last time he was on, he made an interesting point. He said, you know, you should now, uh, fixed income is going to give, give you a serious run for your money, I mean, uh, versus equities. Mm. Uh, your thoughts, uh, you know, peculiar time to ask this question, Mir, with uh, the equity index at all time high, but any thoughts? No, definitely. The bond yields uh, versus earning yields is definitely in favor of bonds at this point in time. And that could be the only domestic risk factor to the inflows into the SIPs and the other financial uh, you know, equities investments that, that we are seeing. Uh, because, you know, uh, he's right, uh, bond yields, if, when you have private sector, some of the newer private sector banks giving you 6 to 7% on your savings bank account, and of course, uh, CDs are going at even much higher levels. One year CD for a lot of the private sector banks are trading at very attractive 8 9% levels. So to that extent, there will be a, a competition from fixed income uh, to the equities market. Uh, not only that, but I think at some point in time, even the real estate market, residential real estate, will begin to look like a value play uh, because not much money has flowed there uh, yet. Uh, so you might see some competition from other asset classes if equities continue to do you know, so well. Okay. Mihir, you know, I just want to take that point forward with regards to the entire macro environment because that is going to, at some point in time, uh, aid the sentiment. Do you think that inflation is probably peaked and then when the RBI does meet next week, there's a possibility that they would be more benign in terms of future rate hikes and that's probably also being factored in somewhere into the markets? Not to mention that we have the FOMC also where there could be a possibility that they would be slowing down. So is that a key factor that even you're probably telling your clients at this point that we're working in a better, uh, you know, probably a slower uh, trajectory of rate hikes now? Uh, sure. Uh, in any case, I think the uh, situation in India was not as bad as, uh, you know, the rest of the world because in India we are used to 6-7% uh, inflation. We, it's not like we've not seen that before. But for the Western world, you know, 6, 8, 10% inflation is something that they haven't seen, seen in generations. So it's it's a much bigger problem for them compared to us. Uh, I think the RBI's key consideration, apart from inflation, of course, that's important, would also be the currency stability because we have seen a drawdown in the FX reserves in the last uh, few months. And that has continued except for the last, last, uh, last week. Uh, so to that extent, I think currency stability and macro stability, how global flows are emerging, will also be a consideration for, uh, for the RBI. As far as India is concerned, I think the RBI's trajectory that they have projected of 5 to 6% inflation and going down to 5 and uh, they're, they're, they're after going down below that in the next uh, 3 to 4 quarters should should be, uh, should be hold true, I think. So I don't think we are in a panic uh, as far as inflation is concerned. Uh, we, but I think RBI will also be driven by the global developments. Okay. So... Uh... Yeah, sorry, go on. Uh, we have Ajay Srivastava who's back with us. And Ajay, I would like to take this point forward as well. Uh, when inflation is not a worry for the markets and we are seeing them at record highs right now, maybe factoring that in as well. But what about valuations? Do you think at these levels, uh, we are way beyond the normal mean? We are. But do you think this is the time when some profit should be taken off the table? You already answered the question. <laughs> you know, you already answered it before you started the saying that, yeah, of course, valuations are astronomical of the Indian market. The demand supply of stock, thanks to PF and insurance money, keeps the purchase going. So that's a good part. But would you buy a valuation of 30, 40, 25 P where the economy is going to grow by 5, 6, 7 percent? I know. So I think, roughly speaking, even if you look at the result of this quarter, there is no earning expansion which is dictating the market. Now we are taught down to strict PE expansion. 
So if your call is that I'm willing to risk my money with PE expansion, good luck to you. If your call is, let's take some profit out, wait a while, doesn't matter, you'll have patience to get on the return, I think you'll be a wiser person. And I think this experience of one year has shown us that if you just look yourself from October till now or June till now, and you see the huge difference in returns. You know, you may look today that you have come at par, but if you were sitting in the month of June or July, it was a blood was on the street at that point of time. Today, you have recovered barely your principal if you were a nifty buyer at the end of the day. So I think wise strategy would be wait it out. You've got to have patience in this market. Buying at these multiples just makes no sense when the economy is where it is. Global markets are where they are. Just relax and, you know, spend your money, I would still say. Spend it better. And I like to call of that Mercedes guy saying, stop the side and buy my marks. I love that guy. Don't I? <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, uh, spend your money in a murk, huh, Ajay? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you start, he's saying. You just stop your SIP and buy a murk. I mean, it's not and, and, I, and I will take your house away when your car goes for repair. No, 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 no. I think that is, <laughs> that is, that is a, uh, I don't know what to say to that. By the way, uh, you know, just a, uh, just a small point, maybe it's just a minor point, but I should say it. The, the high today is, uh, I mean, I'm nitpicking here now. Uh, but uh, the high today is 18,604.35. Uh, the previous high on the 10th of uh, the uh, eight, 19th of October 2021 was 18,604.45. 0.35 is the high, and 0.45 was the high on the 19th of October. So I just went back and checked. Yeah, I mean, so uh, but. You know, would you uh, would you want to pick? So yeah. and, you know, I don't think so. It's For a new all high. practical it's purposes, a, it's, a, it's, there. A new, it's a new high. Absolutely. <laughs> Shankar Sharma is with us as well. Market veteran needs no introduction. Shankar, hi. Uh, you know, and, uh, sort of new highs uh, for the index. Uh, well, you object to this term, veteran. Ah, I should not. A young, a young investor, Shankar Sharma is joining us now. <laughs> is that, yes, exactly. That is, That's your, like it. Uh, your thoughts, Shankar? How how are you how are you feeling? And uh, what, what from here is the question? Well, I'm feeling great. I'm in, in I'm in Istanbul researching Turkey. <laughs> uh, my India trade has worked fantastically well. So I said, let's look at the next trade. I'm coupled with the India trade. So yeah, right now I'm in Istanbul looking at the country and feeling very bullish about Turkey as well. And of course, I've been very, very, very bullish on India from, let's say, from I think March, April, May, June. Uh, you know, when the market was really you know, not looking anywhere close to being as robust as it is now. So the trade has worked out very well. And you? I think tend to remember who it was, was saying that, uh, you know, if you had gotten in, then you would have recovered your losses and he, made it, been in profit. I think that's absolutely correct. Yeah. And uh, so it's been, it's been, it's been fantastic. I mean, I can't complain. You, you know, you, you've uh, from the time that I've started speaking with you, maybe uh, two decades ago, you, you've identified turning points. Uh, you're in Istanbul looking at the Turkish market, which is a completely bombed out market. Uh, you know, yes. it's at lows and we're at highs. Should we make something of it? What? Yes, so <laughs> so India is a standout market, I think, not just, you know, in the last one year or six months, but I think it's going to be a standout market for the next several years. Okay. You know, it could be two, three, five, ten years. I mean, I don't think any other market will compare, uh, you know, if, ticking all the boxes. I'm absolutely clear. And there will be obviously ups and downs as part and parcel of the game, but at every point out into the future, India will be standing out as a clear out performer. And, you know, but then the way I invest is that, you know, not always one, you know, all, all eggs in one basket. And, sure. you know, Turkey, I, I mean, I, I bought about two months back the ETF, which was 33, 24. It's up 40% as a market as a market in dollar terms in two months' time. So that is working out well. I think India and Turkey, if you ask me, both very similar countries, both great industrial powerhouses which have been shadowed by China, uh, they are now you know, coming into their own. And India, of course, is way ahead on all macroeconomic parameters. Hmm. Uh, but then this is trade number two, where I'm right now, researching, seeing, absorbing the atmosphere. Okay, so Istanbul is or rather Turkey is trade number two, but we do have more uh, opinion coming in. We have Mark Mobius, who is the founder of Mobius Capital Partners, joining in to discuss uh, the uh, euphoria in the Indian markets. Mark, hi, welcome to the show. Well, how would you approach... Hi, how are you? Uh, very fine, and the markets are even better at this point. So tell us how you'd approach India from here on. Well, we're very positive on India, as you know, from a long-term perspective. 
of course, you've got to expect uh, some volatility in every market. But India, uh, the picture is so bright, and uh, things are going so well for India. Uh, we're, we're positive long term. And, of course, what's happening in China now is a lesson to anyone whose supply chain depends on China. They've got to wake up to the reality that uh, depending on China for their supplies is a very dangerous kind of uh, process. And they've got to diversify. And the place to diversify into, of course, is India. So uh, it's a very, very good picture, I would think. Mark, uh, are you, uh, should we... Uh, so how should one uh, read that in terms of flows? I mean, a steady foreign inflows uh, from here on as well, Mark? I mean, what's your what's your sense? Oh, oh yes, definitely. As soon as we get more money and we put more into India, first we diversify. Uh, Turkey, uh, we're putting money into Turkey. We put money into Brazil and others. But at the end of the day, India is going to be the bright spot from a long-term perspective. But, of course, one constraint for India is uh, the government regulation. As you know, uh, for foreigners to come into India, there's some uh, bureaucratic steps that have to take place. And the degree to which uh, uh, Ms. Modi is going to uh, eliminate these uh, barriers will be a big, big uh, plus for the market. And I know he's working on that. He's programmed to speed up uh, the uh, improvement uh, or the agreement process is very, very important. Okay. Uh, Mark, what do you make of uh, the sectors from here on? Which ones are you bullish on? Because we are already talking about uh, highs on the Nifty. Uh, you expect some other sectors apart from banking to contribute to these gains? Uh, yes, I think tech, uh, the tech sector, both software and hardware, uh, from a longer term perspective, has got to be good for India. You know, uh, India is already a top performer in the software arena, but I think that is going to grow further, mm. uh, not only for exports, but also for domestic uh, software consumption. But then hardware, uh, you know, you've got to see a bigger, big increase in hardware uh, production in India. Okay. Shankar, you know, actually, I just want to bring that point forward with regards to the entire tech sector. We've seen massive layoffs taking place in the global tech firms. Uh, back home, we've seen the likes of Wipro, TechM not really perform as compared to what we saw in terms of highs last year. How would you approach the entire IT space? How much it, uh, is it in terms of a constituent of your portfolio at this point? No. Many IT stocks in my personal portfolio. Uh, on the fund side, of course, that's different because there is an index that needs to be obviously uh, followed to some extent. On a personal basis, I don't think uh, you know there is big money to be made in any of these companies. I mean, they are large, well-discovered, well-understood companies. Uh, there is not much hidden value, and if anything, the the bias should be a little you know negative given their core market, the U.S. being in a bit of a pickle. Uh, there is a problem in the U.S based on all everything that you see anecdotally as well as, you know, utterances mm. of people like Jeff Bezos who are retailing uh, brains and giants, if they say not very good things about consumer spend and, you know, related things, then we have to take it seriously. It's not just lose opinion. So all said and done, this is not the trade you're going to make a significant amount of money on at all. Okay. All right, Shankar, Mark, and Mihir, and Ajay as well, thank you so much for joining us. You know, we were talking about that 0.10 difference on the Nifty. It's like that Turkish ice cream seller, right? He was just talking about Istanbul, so I thought of that. That so close yet so far. <laughs> just, of course, <laughs> a small point there. But, uh, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us and taking us through your market outlook and a, on a day like this when we are just so close there as well. Uh, with that, we'll do one thing. We'll slip into a short break. We'll get you more on markets and stock-specific action on the other side. Stay tuned.